What's going on, guys? My name is Sean. We're back with the GDC podcast, and today's guest is none other than Ghetto Champ. How you doing already, today, Champ? Champ already. There we go. There we go. So I've been trying to get this man on for a minute, um, and uh, just hasn't been the right opportunity. But we finally got him on, so I'm I'm excited for that. So I do have uh, some questions for you, and I, I guess I'll do a brief introduction. Ghetto Champ is from Houston, Texas. This man is beloved in this city for uh, all kinds of car enthusiast-related activities, hosting meets, stuff like that, um, and uh, kind of being an ambassador for the car community and uh, everything like that. So definitely excited to have him on today. Um, so tell me, who is Ghetto Champ? For those of yeah. for those who don't know you, um, who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Me, Weather Champ is, I'm actually, I'm a YouTuber, you know, a journalist when it comes down to recording takeover meets. That's what I, I specialize in the car community, but I got love for all types of car community. You know, man, I love dealing with cars, you know, slabs, stands cars, race cars, just a little bit of everything, you know. Got love for all types. Yeah, man, y'all go check out my YouTube channel, Weather Champ Productions, you know. Yeah, go check it out right there. There you go. There you go. And are you from Houston, Texas? Absolutely from Houston, Texas. Absolutely. Okay. okay. I see. I, I see you rapping a lot of uh, a lot of Houston, a lot of Astro World type stuff, a lot of Travis Scott playing yeah. in the videos and stuff. I can dig it as a you know guy from Houston. Uh, I claim Houston as well. I'm super excited about that. Um, obviously, the Astros got a win last night, so you yeah. know, yeah. gotta go for it. Um, so what what would you say you're most known for? I'm most known for actually for the for YouTube for the car takeovers. Okay. But people know me more on Instagram. It's crazy because like people know me more on Instagram than on YouTube, but they like it's like kind of a balance. That's off balance right now. Right. But yeah, they know me because I'm like my car and they started like they start kind of actually started a trend where like every time they see a Corvette, they'll be like I think you've seen that before. I've seen it, yes. Yeah. Every time they see a Corvette, they'll be like, oh, Weddle side, Weddle's demon side, Weddle's angel side, Weddle's grandpa, yep. something like that. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Ghetto Champ drives a Jetstream blue Corvette, which is actually the same exact color that I have mine. <laughs> yes, <indeed. laughs> uh, before I got rid of it. And if I'm not mistaken, you watched the YouTube channel um, a while back, right? Like Absolutely. I don't know if it was before Absolutely. you got the vet or not, but um, I know you were, you were a viewer for a while, and then uh, I know you got the vet, and now, like you said, it's become kind of this crazy trend where somebody sees a red vet, they're like, "Oh, that's that's Ghetto's demon side." When somebody yeah. sees a sees like an older vet, it's like that's Grandpa Ghetto, and I the engagement on it's just crazy. Um, yeah, it is very very cool. Um, why do you think the people love you so much? Um. That actually, um, I think because of my, the uh, enthusiasm and persuasive when it comes down to having people to share my videos or okay. just giving me, responding to people, even though I got like lots of DMs, I try to respond to everybody as much as I can. That's why I, um, I'll be more engaged with them, basically. You okay. Know? Yep. Yeah. And I, th I think you're at a certain point where you're definitely in that um, micro influencer space. To where, like, you haven't, like, totally blown up yet, mm -hmm. but on a local level, like, you're building it up, you know, very, very, very active on social, like, beyond, like, anything I've seen as far as, like, micro-influencers in the car community. Super active, like you said, super engaged with fans, followers, things like that, and you post entertaining content. Like, it's always something new. It's always something exciting, and uh, people just tune into that, and especially, like, you're a young guy, you know, you're good looking, you're handsome, like you're, you're down to earth. Like you don't try to be anyone you're not. And I think that is also why people really, really uh, mess with your content, man. I really appreciate that, man. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you have a story to tell us. We talked a little bit about it before we started the interview, but what is this about ghetto ship knowing, uh, the HPD police captain. What's going on here? Oh, man. That was absolutely insane, man. Let me tell you a story. Okay. Start from the beginning. Start from the beginning because I don't, I don't know anything about it. Okay. So, 
one of my homegirls, she said, you know what? I'm going to host a meet at Pluckers. Okay, just a park and chill. Nothing crazy, just a park and chill. Like, okay, cool. You know, like, you know, we love eating at Pluckers. So next thing you know, I reposted it on my social media. And I think cause they follow my Instagram page. And then next thing you know, we pulled up. We are all lined up, like, pretty deep. We are all lined up looking all clean. So, like, so we, we were inside eating. And next thing you know, people, did, they seen the repost. So they started pulling up. But they, re, they pulled up and they started doing the burnout. It was I don't want to say what car or what model. Or <laughs> I don't want to put my like that. Okay. So, next thing you know, I guess the cops were already there hiding the ones that that, that are doing the investigation on the takeovers and things like yeah. that. Yeah. So next thing you know, he does a burnout and then the, he tried to, like, he took off and the cops came in and then some somebody that I know they were blocking the cop car so he could escape. So the cops got really fed up with that. Okay. And next thing you know, I was inside, I was minding my own business. So next thing you know, I like they were telling me, Hey bro, there's on uh, somebody just burned out outside and then I'm like, Oh man, that's crazy. And I don't know where I feel I see a cop come in, grab me for my share and talking about Come here, you're being detained. I'm like, what am I being detained for? What am I doing? I'm over here minding my business. And then I didn't know what was going on. So I went outside and then I was just, you know, being respectful as much as possible and not doing nothing. I was just doing my part. Right. And then he realized that I wasn't, he was just trying to look for who jumped in front of the vehicle. Sure. And then, so next thing you know, like he was doing after, right? Everybody investigating. So he just let me go back in the, the restaurant. And I was just like, man, that's crazy. And this, like, and and this, this was who? Who? The 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 was this an officer? Or... It was an officer, the captain, the officer, the captain. But at the moment, I didn't know it was him. Uh, yeah. Okay. So next thing you know, he. So time passed by. So so, so, this, like, so this was HPD one. Yes. This HPD. was the this was the guy we saw in the news a couple of weeks ago. He stopped the. I think it was a charger. He was running after. Um, who ended up? I think he was off duty. He ended up catching up. This was the guy. Yes. This wow. Was the guy. Wow. It was so unexpected. And tell me why the whole Pluckers, the uh, the restaurant, was full of full of cop cars. I'm talking about. They didn't let nobody out. Not even the regular customers. Yeah. They didn't let nobody out. The valet people. They were tripping. They're like, "Hey, what's happening?" <laughs> yeah. Wow. But but they recognized you from Instagram, from YouTube. Mm-hmm. And they thought you may have had something to do with, you know, blocking the cars. And they singled you. You were eating your wings. And then, yeah. <laughs> right. I went here minding my business. Yeah, That's and I crazy. have my wings and I feel somebody pulling my shit. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it, it's scary at, yeah. at some level. And, then, you know, it's kind of crazy that they would even know who you are. Uh, but yeah. once again, you know, obviously, and obviously, like, I myself, like, this is an interview we're conducting, you know. Um, I don't, I don't condone any illegal activities, you know, officially, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it it is kind of cool that you know you have been doing your thing in the car community, and um, y- people are recognizing you, and um, you know, for good or for bad reasons, you're gaining a lot of attention, and um, you know, money follows attention. Hopefully, that that's the case for you, and I hope you have a you know you have a bright future and whatever you choose to do. Um, but, but that, that's a crazy story. That's, that's pretty cool. We, you and I both know, um, you know, there's been a lot of heat on, um, street racing on these takeover meets and stuff in Houston. I, I can honestly say, I know the Dallas guys do their thing. Um, but I, I think Houston, I think we do it the best. I think the most active car community is in Houston. I mean, what do you think? Like, obviously, we're biased, but, I mean. Absolutely, man. Houston, I think Houston has the best uh, car enthusiast scene yeah. ever since years, past years. And, the you know how they do TX2K? Like, yep, they do it in yep. Houston. That's right. Yeah, because. In Houston, they have a big car community as well. So, yeah. I think this is, like, a new trend that just recently started. Pop- I knew there was takeovers back then. Yeah. But, like, Cook Thursday, Slap Sunday, things like that. But it wasn't right. as big as, like, organized as these meets as right now. Right. And so, if you can, you know, 
can you speak on, um, you know, kind of what goes on at these meets? Um, obviously, you're not going to throw any names or anything out there, but um, can you kind of talk about these meets for people who might not know, people outside of Houston or kind of not aware? What what exactly is a takeover meet? Okay, the exactly what a takeover meets is like whenever there's all types of cars. It don't matter what car you drive. It could be a race car, a stance car, whatever, whatever you want. So takeover meets are like basically whatever they just – going to some parking lots random or intersections and they like doing donuts and burnouts. It just like whenever they do that, they generally gets people h- pumped up. Right. And the it is there, the adrenaline is there and people they get hyped up and they just start doing burnouts and it's huh. it's pretty interesting, you know, when it comes down to it. Okay. Okay. And what I've seen some fireworks. What's going on with the fireworks? Oh man, <laughs> I don't know. It just just add fuel like, to the fire. Yeah, I guess, man. I guess they want – I don't even know where they came from. They just started just seeing fireworks blowing up everywhere, man. On 4th of July, there was actually a meet. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. It was like a war zone in there. It was fireworks blowing up there. <laughs> there, there. I saw I saw something about a, uh, a a warehouse meet that was a couple months ago. Yeah, inside a warehouse. Uh, they just found a warehouse that was not even open yet, and they all started going inside, but some donuts inside of the warehouse. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Tell, tell me, what are your, uh, what are your kind of current goals right now? What are you looking to accomplish, uh, you know, in the, in the car community? And I know I've seen a lot of stuff on your Instagram about, uh, I, I know you have a lot of aspirations. I know you have a lot of dreams. I know you have a lot of goals. Um, what are they? Share share with the audience what those are. Okay, one of my main goals is to impact people's lives in positive ways. That's one of my main goals, and and one of my goals in the car community is to let's just stop hating on each other on like the stance cars, don't like the race cars or the risers and everything. Right. It's just like they just all stand together, you know, and get along. Cause there's a lot of hatred in the car community, believe it or not, but there is. Right. But I'm trying to stop the hatred. I, I kind of got some people like, you know, like, hey, you know, yeah, they're basically cool people. They're not judging by their vehicle or the person. Yeah. But yeah. Got to get that it going. Absolutely. And I, to be honest, like, and I've seen this big trend with Gentlemen's Driving Club is that we don't, and I, this is how I started. Like, we don't care what car you're driving like if you're passionate about it we want you in the club like if you're passionate about the car community you're passionate about what you're driving you're passionate about what you're modifying we want you in the club we want to interact with you and at first it kind of people were like "Eh," you know they just accept everybody but then like as we grew and we started getting more like name guys on like yourself they started to realize like no these guys are doing it because they want everybody to get along like they, they want to build that community. So it's been really, real cool. Exactly the same thing what you're talking about. Absolutely, man. Love that energy right there. Yes, sir. Getting everybody together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So so tell me, what drives you? What drives you? Like the shirt? Yeah. Shirt. <laughs> yeah. What, what what drives you, man? What um what gets you up in the morning? Why'd you get into the car community? Like, what is it? Um, first of uh, first off, you know, I always loved cars ever since I was little. I love cars. When I was when I was little, I actually had a go kart, and I used to ride around the school zone and everything. I didn't care, man. I just I just loved it. Yeah, it just kept going and kept going, man. It started going on me. Anything with cars, right? Yeah, Any, it was anything with wheels. <laughs> yeah, anything on wheels with a motor, man. It just gets me racing. You know, it gets me pumped up. There you yeah. go. There you go. Um, and, uh, not another big thing in the, you know, Houston car scene, we saw, uh, someone in the community actually, uh, was in court today and, uh, I wish him, you know, I don't know all the circumstances of the case, things like that. You probably know a little bit better than me. Um, uh, but obviously as, as a fellow car enthusiast, um, uh, I actually sent him a message today and, uh, I wish him best of luck and, um, you know, the things he's going through and, I hope that uh, whenever he does get everything resolved, um, you know, he has a bright and impactful future and, you know, he's able to, he's able to come back big and strong and do what he's got to do. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, 
but yeah, that's 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 kind of. Do you have any other stories? Because the plugger story was really good. I want to hear another story before we get off of here. <laughs> uh, well, uh, let me finish off the story from Pluckers. Okay, I didn't know there was place. more. Yeah, man. So they were surrounding the place, and we we're just waiting there for us to leave. We we're, we we're just waiting there for like for them to leave because they were just right there. They literally parked in every single corner, waiting for one of us to leave. I'm like, man, you know what? So one of my friends left. I was like, man, let's see how it goes. So they let him go. And I'm like, all right, man. So we were waiting there. We were waiting there, waiting there. So I just finally said, you know what? I got to go. I can't be waiting out here until they close or whatever. Yeah. So I was just minding my business, going slow, regular speed, everything. And then next, you know, I seen four cars behind me. I'm like, I already know they're going to pull me over. I <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went to the gas station where, I, like, they were going to be there. And then the main captain, Officer Campo, he went up to me. He like, Hey, I know you. You're a world champ. I like, man, what? I like, I kind of said like, oh, yes, sir. You're like, well, I had the the big um, world champ in the back of my car in GCP. Yeah. And he said, I went to your party last time. I'm like, what? Oh. Yeah, and so I went to the party, and then I like, man, I'm like, so we just, he was just having a conversation with me with everything. Yeah. About the whole takeover situation. And I was being as polite as possible, as always. Sure. Mm-hmm. So next, you know, I had these other cops, the other three cops looking around my vehicle, looking if anything's messed up, anything. Mm-hmm. Next, you know, I got like five tickets for no reason. But like, Wait, you know, what? Like, yeah. They gave me a ticket for having the the boxing gloves hanging on the rearview mirror. Are like, you joking me? Nah, they, they actually gave me a ticket for that. I like I didn't know. He was telling me something, but I was just like, there, I was there, just with everything. Well, whatever he was talking about, he said something. I don't know about a law or something. I was just like, okay, yes, sir. I understand. Right, but, right, right. And then next, you know, he gave me another ticket for missing one glug now. One of my wheels had to break one of the wheels. Like, <laughs> he gave me a, uh, a ticket for that. <laughs> he was just searching for stuff at that point. Yes, for anything. And I, I, before that, I actually take my front license plate. Well, uh-huh. all my friends did, and but he tried to give me for that one, but he couldn't. And then uh-huh. he gave me for having a crack in my windshield or something defective glass. I'm like, what? And then you know, said, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and then um, he gave me another ticket for expired sticker, but I already, I knew, I kind of understand the expired sticker, but I got that situated already. I got all of that situated. It was just minimal sure. things, but any little reason to get out of the ticket, basically. So. They they were trying to send a message, basically. <laughs> yeah, like, hey man, you need to start the car community before we keep messing with you. Uh, yeah, they they're, they're basically trying to send a message saying, "Hey, we know who you are. We know what's going on." Like, you know. Yeah. So, well, <sighs> I I don't know what else to say on that topic. <laughs> I know, man. It's absolutely- without without getting too too deep into it, you know, I'll always be respectful of law enforcement that kind of thing, which I which I know you are. Um, but you know they're gonna they're gonna do what they're gonna do, right? Yeah, man. They, they kind of getting tired of people doing that now. Ever since you know what I noticed, ever since they came out in the news, yeah, we all came out in the news. They kind of got the the HPD's attention, right? Yeah. Well, you know, as, as we know, whenever the media gets a hold of something, it it gets really blown up, blown out of proportion, and it's going to get the attention of you know, a police chief or police captain, like, um, as soon as those videos come out and things happen, you know, that stuff is being brought to their attention and then it becomes a focus. And then that's where, you know, we get trouble going on. So, um, for all you guys, you know, car enthusiasts, my advice, like, um, have fun, be safe and, uh, you know, stay out of the gas stations i guess <laughs> <laughs> um but you know champ i appreciate you coming on man for absolutely. sure i appreciate uh, you too man absolutely we got some big things coming uh, if you guys want to see more of him check him out on youtube ghetto champ productions on instagram at just ghetto champ right on instagram yes, world champ yes indeed That's right and then we also have your merch on GentlemansDrivingClub.com as well. So if you guys want to pick up some of his merch, 
he gets proceeds from that merch. So go ahead and support him. Hop on the website, gentlemansdrivingclub.com. Pick that up. We got three different designs right now. Hopefully, many more in the future. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna be doing some big things. We're gonna we're gonna see how this goes. See how the see how the public likes it, and uh, work on some more content and stuff with uh, Mr. Champ over there. Yes, and yeah, I love that. I love that energy right there. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. You got anything you want to add uh, before I go ahead and cut the broadcast? I want to say thank you to everybody who's going to be watching the podcast. I want to say thank you to everybody, you know, that shows love and support to all my videos. And thank you for supporting Gentleman Driving Club, my first sponsor, man. They show a lot of love and support. Really appreciate y'all, man. For real. Yes, sir. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one. All right. Be safe, man. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the GDC podcast. I think we're in week number seven. We've got Noah and Austin back on the podcast. What's going on, guys? Not much. Not major. Uh, Brody Brody is uh, out this week. Billy is out this week. So we've got Noah and Austin on. We've got a few hot topics. Uh, we are supposed to have um ghetto champ on the podcast today uh unfortunately i think he's running a little bit late hopefully he can make it on here uh but as they say the show must go on so we're gonna keep on uh pushing through this and do our thing um i like the hat Noah. i like the hat looking good yeah i like it too <laughs> um so the first thing i wanted to talk about was at an article i read on car and driver the other day uh, Uber and a company named Waymo is mapping city streets for their future self-driving fleets. Um, so basically, Uber is working with basically a startup third-party company. They're mapping streets out for these self-driving cars because obviously, at some point, Uber is going to want to cut out, um, you know, the employee, the driver, and make it self-driving. It's only going to increase profits, right, and decrease liability, insurance, all that good stuff. Um, so just a little bit about the program. It says uh, autonomous cars need to know curb height, traffic, light placement, speed limits, and road quality. It's a whole different kind of map. Uh, Uber, the ride-sharing company, and Waymo, the autonomous driving startup, are, sep are separately each mapping a major city to create HD maps for self-driving cars. Uh, Uber's pilot city is Dallas, while Waymo is working on Los Angeles, and the maps will measure curb heights, road surfaces, speed limits, traffic locations, among other things. Um, that's pretty crazy. Like, I, I knew that kind of thing was coming, but I didn't realize it was coming this quickly. You know, you see Google um, and Apple, they have, you know, their own vehicles in basically every city in America um, doing the mapping for their map programs. But for these self-driving cars, I just thought it was absolutely crazy. And this is looking like it's going to happen a lot sooner than later. What is you guys' take on that? I mean, that is, that is kind of cool. I mean, you don't have to be nervous about who's actually driving you anymore since I guess there's going to be no one in the car when you get in. <laughs> so my question then is, Normally, if you get a cab or an Uber or whatever, you get in the back seat. But if the uh -huh. car's running itself, do you still have to get in the back seat? Well, I mean, that's an option. You know, some some Uber drivers. Actually, fun fact: when I was in Miami, I did a little bit of Uber driving as kind of like a side gig. And um, I mean, sometimes you you let people sit in the front seat. It just kind of depends on the situation. But my concern is, and I'm looking up right now. I'm not ignoring you guys. Is how many Uber drivers are because what I saw in Miami was a lot of people drove Uber there, a lot of immigrants, um, because they couldn't either they didn't have papers or whatever the case may be. They were driving for Uber and Lyft, and that's how they made their full time living. I mean, these guys were driving eight, 10, 12, 15 hour days, and that's how they were making the living. So, I mean, the amount of jobs, you know, and I'm a capitalist myself, but the amount of jobs that are going to be lost by these self-driving cars is crazy. So one thing I've been telling anyone who drives Uber or Lyft is, hey, you know, get a business started, get some other side hustle going, because at some point that's going to be all over. Yeah. 
Um, Elizabeth says we've had self-driving cars in Phoenix and there's been issues with it. Well, yeah, it, like anything new, there's going to be issues. I'm curious to what those are and how major those issues um, could become. But I mean, you, you know, you've got the loss of jobs, which automation is going to do that moving forward, especially, you know, just in the car industry, you've got Uber, Lyft, um, and then all the, the truck driving, right? Yeah. You know, any operation in this country has truck drivers to get their product from point A to point B. And at some point, all of those jobs will be gone. So. Well, yeah, I already heard of a, a couple of companies making self-driving um, semis pretty soon. I know, um, I think it's uh, Tesla's actually making one, and then I think Mercedes is also. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, you've got the major, as a company, you've got the major cost of that kind of technology and that kind of vehicle, but it's a one-time cost compared to, you know, paying drivers, um, you know, over the span of their life, plus all the liability and everything. So, I mean, it's coming. And that's why I, I've been telling people that I know um, we've talked in the chat. I know, uh, Noah, you had, you'd talked to me about, you know, starting a business and, you know, you wanted to do something and um, that's the way to go. Like that's, that's where America is going is we're moving into kind of a free agent nation. Like there's going to be jobs available. Yes. But it's very important that you start something of your own and kind of build your own economy. Yeah. I think the issue with that, though, is with everybody starting businesses, it's going to be hard to make your business different than everybody else's. Yeah. I, I, think, that's, I think that's looking at the glass, you know, half empty instead of half full. You know, there's always going to be ways to differentiate. Like, no shoe is really all that different, right? But when the new KD comes out, you buy it, <laughs> right? The new Kobe's come out, people buy it. The new LeBron, you know, the new LeBron James shoes, you buy it. So I think there's different ways you can you can differentiate, and um, you know, I think eventually that's going to be basically everyone owning their own little economies. And I've I've seen it firsthand. Elizabeth says. Uh, there was a huge accident here where a self-driving car hit a pedestrian and killed them. They pulled self-driving cars from Phoenix. Wow. Well, there you go. There's your first issue right there. Um, who's held responsible? The company, obviously. You know, company, what are they going to do? Blame it on the manufacturer of the parts? Oh, a lot yeah. of angles to this. A lot of and angles then, okay. They might actually blame it on the uh, programmer who has to develop what the car does in that situation. So it's not even the car itself. It's the person who implemented the programming for it. There you go. Yeah, like what I think I said on one of the other podcasts with the self-driving, they're not full self-driving. It's supposed to be self-driving assist where your hands still have to be on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. But the car will basically drive itself. But if something does go wrong with the program or something, you can still correct it. Right, right. And see, I see that in a... In a dealer, you know, in a traditional sense of you owning a self-driving car, 100% Austin. But in the sense of an Uber situation, you're not going to have somebody behind that wheel. See, that, that's honestly, it's kind of scary because what if something does happen and you're in the back seat and you notice it's going wrong, like how fast can you get in the driver's seat? And is, is there going to be a steering wheel? <laughs> well, I think, I de- well, that's a good question. <laughs> I would I would assume... As a last resort, there would still be a steering wheel. It'd still be a, a ability to get in there, but I, I also think it's going to be something to where they're going to put procedures and protocols in place. Kind of like as as an airline pilot and flying planes, they have the Sigma Six program, right? Where they have I can't remember eighty nine different checklist things they have to fill out to before they take flight right so i think it's going to be kind of the same thing when these cars do go mainstream i believe there's going to be a very strict guideline um and procedures to make sure that these vehicles are on the road and driving safely well, yeah there is there's the- still always that that chance of something going wrong though yeah very true for that though very true well, i can agree with that especially because you have to think about are people actually going to do their jobs when they're sending these things out? 
Because like we all know there's different types of mechanics. There's a shade tree and then there's the people who actually want to be doing the work that they're doing and will send it out knowing that it's done properly. Mm -hmm. so it could be the same instant instance when it comes to these self-driving cars. If they, even if they have a checklist, they might just skip over five things because they don't feel like doing it. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen a couple well, of mechanics like that in my field a couple of times. Yep. Mm -mm -mm. That's why I said um, yeah, I mean, and the sad part is we are human, so it does happen. There is human error. Um, there's, you know, mechanical error. But the hope is that we reduce that as much as possible. So I think part of like Sigma 6 protocols, I think it's one mistake in every million is their goal, or six mistakes in every million, so, uh, something like that. But it's, Elizabeth says, uh, it was at nighttime and the vehicle did not see the pedestrian. The driver couldn't stop the car. It was actually a self-driving Uber car. Well, I, I don't, I don't get what you mean by the driver couldn't. Oh, the driver couldn't stop the car. Okay, so the vehicle didn't see the pedestrian. The driver couldn't stop the car. That sounds like a complete nightmare and a huge lawsuit. <laughs> Actually, right? like, what was happening to the point where the driver couldn't stop the car? What's that? What was happening to the point where the driver couldn't stop the car? Were the brakes failing or was it the computer saying, no, we're not going to engage the ABS in order to engage with the rest of the system? Uh, so Elizabeth says she wasn't paying attention. So the computer systems in the vehicle didn't see the pedestrian. And then she, as the human, didn't see or wasn't paying attention because why would you pay attention if you're not driving the car? Right. Like, I mean, let's be real. If you have a self-driving yeah. car, are you really going to be paying it? I mean, people people text and drive right now. Like, if someone else is driving, you know, why, why would you be paying attention? That's a good point. Right? Yeah, so, I, heard, I heard an instance sort of like that, but it was in the daytime when Tesla first came out, the whole self-driving thing. And it was a tanker truck, and the sun was blaring on the, the truck, and the truck was merging, but the car couldn't see it because it just acted like it wasn't there in the truck ran into the tesla mm -mm -mm. see that's why I like my good old you know gasoline power car <laughs> i'm i'm behind the wheel no issues no worries right i am one with my vehicle <laughs> exactly exactly so moving on from that topic uh uaw strike to delay the c8 corvette production uh, it says that the Detroit Free Press reported today, citing people familiar with GM's production plans, that the start of the production for the 2020 mid-engine and Chevy Corvette is going to be delayed. The paper said that the United Auto Workers strike against General Motors now in its fourth week is the reason. However, a GM spokesperson said uh, that it's too early to speculate on the potential production timing impacts of the strike in any of our vehicles, including the Corvette. I I don't think this is going to be a big deal. I mean, not to say it happens all the time, but GM, Ford, all these companies have th their labor unions. They have strikes. They delay production a little bit, but I, it never seems to be a huge deal when it comes to production, in my opinion. Um, did did I think, you say why they started the strike? Uh, we we kind of talked. We kind of touched on it in the past podcast, but. It's the same thing for every start strike, you know, benefits, pay, you know, uh, same thing. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and we're going to start seeing a lot more of this type of stuff. This is kind of starting to sound like a business podcast, but um, we are moving into a recession, you know, and so you're going to start seeing these things happen and these issues pop up more and more as we get into 2020, as we see, you know, the outcome of these elections so on and so forth. I mean, it doesn't matter what the election outcome is going to be. We are moving into recession, but it could speed it up or it could slow it down. Um, yeah, but we'll see. I, th I think that GM will do what they have to do to get the car out to the people who have pre-ordered it, and I don't think it'll be a huge issue in the end. What do you think, Noah? Um, well... Are you asking me like what I think about the reason for the strike or what I think it's going to do to the production? Both. Both. Well, I think the reason for the strike is kind of ridiculous because I've done a little bit of research 
on like the benefits and uh, wages that GM give. Mm-hmm. And from what I've noticed, as far as they pay their union, it's actually better than any other union is getting paid for that air, like for that area of production okay. as far as like all the American companies go. Hmm. The benefits I can kind of see, especially considering the conditions they probably have to work in, but going on strike about it is a little bit different than just trying to work something out with the general manager. Right. But, uh, you know, um, you know, as well as I know that with these unions, it seems, you know, they have a union spokesperson and most of the time they do go to the company, they make their proposal, it gets shut down and then they threaten to go on strike. And then once their proposal gets shut down, once again, they just go on strike. Like that's typically how it works with unions. So yeah. I get exactly what you're saying, but unfortunately that's kind of the, the nature of that kind of industry. Same yeah. thing with, you know, it is, it is, but I don't think, it'll, I don't think it's going to affect uh, production though, just because with how many vehicles are produced, it's not really going to slow that much down. Right. But that. And another thing to understand is that the company can take a few weeks off from production can the employee can the average american go without work for more than a month and the answer to that question is no yeah so also and now i i see that look on your face you know that's the truth though you know oh it is but i'm laughing because so many people will think that they can go without working for so long but when you start adding up your insurance costs your house bills if you have any um any other grocery bills or whatever you start adding it up and you realize, Oh, this strike is leading to me being without pay. Well, there goes everything that I need and I'm broken. And right. There's also the possibility whether your employer would just fire you and just hire someone else. That's not going to go on strike. Right. Well, I, I think they're a union. So I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure on exactly how it works. You're but right. They are. That, that I, I, they can't be, I don't think that's, yeah, That's have, an option for them. protection laws and stuff. And some right, know. exactly, exactly. Um, Noah, I want you to go ahead and take the lead on this Subaru WRX STI inf- information that you came across. All right. So I'm not 100% on much of it. It was just uh, something that was brought to me earlier today during my shift. We were doing an oil change on an STI and... The reason it was brought up was because to do an oil change on this, just to get to the filter, there's this big plastic piece that goes underneath the entire engine. And that has to come off and it's like eight or nine clips and it's very time consuming. But uh, one of the guys that was watching me and the other technician do it, he mentioned that the reason it's there is because they're not on the same platform that uh, all the other uh, Subaru models are on right now. Okay. So right now, according to this, which I'm trying to skim through as quickly as possible, they're on an EJ20 platform, okay. and they're going to be switching to a uh, FA20 platform, which will have, <clears throat> it'll have a little bit more uh, horsepower but it's also supposed to be a lot easier for technicians to work on because we're not going to have to remove the uh, plastic cover from what we hold. Gotcha. Very nice. cool. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Noah actually works for Subaru. And um, that's that's kind of where I think his interest and his insight comes in this topic for sure on the, on the technical aspect. But um, something to branch off of that topic with is as we talked about last week with the Mazda building their, their TCR, um, you know, track car and obviously Corvette always does this thing racing wise. I feel like a lot of these companies are really trying to, uh, please us car enthusiasts here in 2019 going into 2020. Like, I feel like, you know, just five years ago, a company like a Mazda or, or something like that, they wouldn't be too, too concerned about us, but like we talked about, they're dropping these cars that are equipped to be put on a track right from the factory with warranties, you know, supercharged, turbocharged, um, 
all that, all the bells and whistles. And I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a great thing for the car community. Yeah. And I think people yeah. are really starting to take notice um, that, you know, we would love to have these cars come out like that from the factory. Well, you just look at the Dodge Demon. It comes stock with slicks and everything. Yep. Then I, I read an article when you first buy this base model. Apparently, it only comes with the driver's seat. But you pay like 20 bucks and you get like the other seats and stuff. Then you can get... No, it's just a dollar. It's, it's literally like a, <laughs> it's, it's a production it's drag car. Huh? What's that? It's $1 to add the uh, passenger seat. Yeah, I remember no. it was super cheap. But literally, you buy yeah. it. You can literally just have it all stripped already. You don't have to strip it. Yeah. <laughs> There you, there you go. There you go. There you go. Elizabeth or Leticia, if you want to hop in here, I'd love to chat it up. Uh, Elizabeth is one of our newest members to the club and is in the Discord group. Um, I think she's just getting off work, so she might be a little caught up. Um, still on shift. <laughs> um, and Leticia is. Uh, someone from Houston. She's in the Houston car community. I'd love to hear from her if she's comfortable getting on camera. Um, and she is one of our drivers as well. Supports the brand a lot. So um, if you guys want to hop in, just hit that grab this spot button. So I actually, guys, I got a Snapchat. And since it's on Snap, I, did, I didn't even save it. But I had a gentleman, I'm not going to say his name, but... He drunk Snapchatted us on the official GVC Snapchat last night. And essentially, to paraphrase, he was just kind of like, man, I really mess with your brand hard. Da, 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 da. Like he was out of his mind. He was like, I'm not driving right now. My friend's driving so I can live life. And I, I don't know. I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Like people drunk Snapchatting us. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All, yeah. Not as not as cool as getting a GDC tattoo, but oh, but sure. but definitely up there. Definitely <laughs> up there. Um, any comments on the tattoo, Austin? No, it's it's still there. <laughs> I got a question for you, Sean. What's that? When are you getting yours, dude? Oof. Dude, it's coming. It's coming. It might be a it might be a Christmas uh might be a Christmas gift to myself. So how are you going to feel if I get mine before you get yours? No, no, no. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, man. If you if you get if you uh, if you got the time and, and the cojones to do it, do it, man. Um, I will be getting one though. I, I got to get over the fear of uh, the actual tattoo, but once I do that, it's a done deal. Oh, is, is this going to be your first one? Yeah, man. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm not a bit. I'm not big on needles. It's not my, yeah. not my thing. Yeah, I I couldn't look the first time I got mine. I was like, oh, <laughs> it's uh, not that bad. It's like right when they first start, then it just you just kind of get used to it. Yeah, like the first minute uh, just sucks. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. I might end up with half a design. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Audi's gonna be in the shop all week next week. So they d they did the diagnostic last week. They told me what was wrong, and I was like, "Okay, let me pro let me mentally process this real quick." <laughs> they can use my offer. What's oh, how, that? How much are they um charging you for that? Um, I, I'm not sure yet. Um, he kind of it was a soft quote. He was like, "It's probably going to be around fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred bucks," but I won't know for sure until they get in there and start working on it. So. We'll see. Hopefully not much more than that. You still should have taken me up on my offer. Yeah. <laughs> see, that just doesn't work for me. <laughs> I'm going to – I'll get it fixed. That's like the only issue with the vehicle. So um, I'm going to get it fixed. We're going to keep rolling. What, wasn't it just like uh, oil leaks? Yeah, like eight of them. Oh, were they like really bad ones or like leaving like puddles everywhere? Um, like I can't get 10 minutes down the street without being out of oil. No, <laughs> dude. Yeah, man. dude. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, so what's going on guys? When are y'all starting your YouTube channels? I'm, I'm just been really busy lately. I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm planning on it though. It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. 
Austin, I'm hearing a lot of excuses over there, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. I got the tattoo <laughs> still. I'm, I would do that. I can do a YouTube channel. <laughs> Noah, I know, um, you, I know you're going to film this race. Yeah, I definitely got to film the race between me and, uh, and King. But uh, as far as the YouTube channel goes, me and another Grand Am, uh, another guy from the Grand Am enthusiasts are going to go in on it. And uh, for me, it's just a matter of actually finishing up what I'm doing to my car right now, as far as like painting the uh, center console and getting the seats installed. Okay. And then I'm going to have more time and room in my small room to actually be able to like move around and do things sure. to actually work on getting it started. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wait, wait. So, so while, while you were doing all this stuff to your car, what car have you been driving to work? My uh, car. What's See, that? My, my center console was literally out of my car and I was driving to work. Oh, okay. So, oh, yeah. That's right. You still have your driver's seat. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. I take it. Yeah. I'll take it back. Yeah, I wasn't that dumb. I thought about it, but <laughs> I came really close to taking it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you, how's the weather in Florida right now? Um, it varies. In the mornings, it's about. 58 degrees and then in the afternoons it's around 85 that's actually pretty close to what we are we we just got it you have all the humidity over there yeah we just got a cold front man it's cold here yeah you're lucky probably let's see it got a little chilly it's it's 51 degrees right now, but you got to understand. I know you said you're like, no, that's not that cold. It was like 90 yesterday. <laughs> it's a that, big that's difference. Texas weather though, it just changes in an instant. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, absolutely. I got ridiculous. It. I do know that my car loves cold weather a lot more than uh, the heat because I was uh, having some fun with an MX-5 on my way to uh, work this morning. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I still won because they almost hit a car. <laughs> <laughs> All about well, the driver. Well, I promised a uh, a t-shirt giveaway for this podcast. So I guess I will go ahead. I kind of showed it on Instagram. but So we made these shirts in like an army green, but I had one printed in white. I needed it for some some other purposes. But um, still got the tag on it. Everything's clean. Never been worn. And we're going to give it away to someone live in the chat today. Um, let's see who we got. We got Elizabeth in here. We got Moki Awa in here. And we got Leticia. What do, what do we think, gentlemen? What do we think? No, you can't put that on me, man. I... Yeah, they'll be coming after you. The whole names in a hat thing was kind of a smart thing you were saying yesterday. Yeah, that way it's not like you're just choosing someone. That's true. Well, you guys start talking while I while I get these names going. All right. <laughs> so uh, Noah, is, I heard yeah. a little rumor. Are they are they going to stop making the WRX here in a couple years, like what they did with the the Evos? I highly doubt it. Just because the Evo isn't around anymore, so the WRX has no competition. So there'd be no reason for them to stop making them unless they just wanted to focus on the BRZ, which the BRZ is trash, as we all know, unless you put $20,000 into it. I mean, so I still kind of want one just for a little little cruiser because I oh, always love the body yeah. style, but I, I know they're, they're pretty slow as heck, but. They, they look cool, in my opinion. I would love one just because they're a great, uh, they're a great car for like a beginner track one, but for like a street racer or anything like that, they're not. Uh, I, I just think they look cool. <laughs> I feel like a twenty twelve because then you can get one of those for like ten thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, but I heard um. I might be uh, might be wrong on this, but I think aren't they? Um, they're going to change the body style of the BRZ here pretty quick, aren't they? They're going to put a little boost package in it or something. They might, 
um, depending on if the BRZ is on the same platform the WRX is, because if it's on the same one the current WRX is on, then they're going to be switching it over to the uh, FA20 as well. And then they'll probably be doing something different from the BRZ because of a different style of car than the WRX. Oh, okay. Okay. So I've got uh, Elizabeth is coming on in a said so we can kind of wait up for her so give me a second i'll join all right but i've got the names in the crown royal cup <laughs> so we'll pick we'll see we'll see what we got who we got who we got elizabeth Elizabeth won the shirt. Sweet. Congratulations, nice. Elizabeth. 